Hey Dominik. Hey Steffen. How do you embed social media content into your WordPress website? Um, it's actually pretty easy on first sight, right? Because WordPress has a built-in functionality for embedding content that uses definition called OEmbed. It's like a protocol directly into your website. So you have probably seen that whenever you are in the content editor in Gutenberg or in even the tiny MCE, you can just paste a URL. This URL will, when you render the content, be converted into a iframe or into something else. But usually it's like an iframe because what you do is you have this um, URL. It will um, fetch like the OEmbed information and get back from the server some like different metadata, but most importantly, an HTML snippet. And this HTML snippet will be then integrated onto your website. And this is where the problem comes in, <laughs> where things get complicated. Because this HTML snippet, it can be anything, right? It can just be regular um, HTML, like a, a normal elements that you would find on any website. You, it could also be an iframe. It could be scripts. It could be uh, CSS and so on, or a link tags uh, or style tags. You don't really have any control over it, right? Um, you cannot really change the looks usually um, depending on what it is uh, or how this HTML is structured then bound to um, what this OEmbed provider offers you or what it provides you. Yeah. And um, wait, I had a question in my head. I forgot it. <laughs> yes. Why is this problematic? That, that was Why my question. Why is this problematic, you ask? <laughs> but, oh, even more specific. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I immediately think about is also the GDPR, the privacy, right? When you embed, embed something from an external website, you don't really know when they are loading on your website, if that's an iframe, right? So I think about what are, what steps should you take to mm -hmm. ensure that you stay privacy conform with using OEmbeds? Mm. So um, this is why um, like WordPress specific privacy plugins or GDPR plugins, cookie, note, consent management plugins, whatever you want to call them. This is where they come in really handy because usually they hook into these um, OEmbed resolutions and then replace an iframe or something with like a placeholder. And only when you have accepted a certain uh, um, consent or like cookie, then they will load the iframe. So this is super nice. And this is something that an external solution cannot give you on such a, a like early level, right? Like you should definitely know what you embed and, and how this works. Also, like what is a problem, what we've seen is that like sometimes like it, it might not even be a privacy issue, right? Because you don't necessarily need to load an iframe, although this is what most providers do. But like the original OEmbed resolution is taking place on the server. And if this is not cached, uh, and if you don't have any caching mechanism, and then every time you request a page, it always has to fetch like the OEmbed information first. So, and if you have like uh, lots of uh, um, OEmbeds on one page, this can take a long time. So rendering will uh, be delayed. And also if the external server is offline, for example, uh, your site might also hit a timeout while rendering, and then your visitor also will get a, a, an error message. So. Be sure that you have like some sort of caching mechanism in there, either like full page caching, or you can also like cache these OEmbed responses separately in, in your database. And I think the way we do that with our Flint starter theme is we cache it in some transients. Is that true? Sometimes, yes. Not always. So actually, it's, I think, because we, we usually in our projects, we use heavy page caching, right? Then it is actually a nice benefit to whenever you clear your page cache that you also refetch the OEmbed code because this might change. Like you, you, you don't know. Something was updated, some newer versions are on there, some newer formats, and so on. All right. Yeah. And, and OEmbed is like this open format that everyone that, that can implement however they want. So you see a lot of differences, uh, but you always have like this HTML part, at least like from my experience. So that means also if um, there is like some content that WordPress doesn't recognize, maybe doesn't have 
OMBED. There is an easy uh, way to do that. Like, for example, write your own OMBED provider for that or contact the platform that you want to embed and tell them, yeah, please uh, um, add like OMBED to your platform so that we can embed it easily in, in different places as well. Right. Then this was like the server side that I talked about that might and the privacy side. But also um, there are some OMBED providers that also integrate scripts, maybe load like lots of data. And in WordPress, these things are not optimized. So it could be that the same script will be added over and over again to your site. And uh, then the script will only initialize like this one embed part that uh, um, it belonged to, or it will initialize all of them, but then the script will do it multiple times because it's also added multiple times to your website. So in, that's why you should always, if you use an O embed, always check the output and check what it actually um, creates. And in some cases, it might be like a good idea to either install another plugin that will like slim down uh, the version there's for for example for youtube there are a lot of like youtube light plugins right where you can um, just make sure that it uh, doesn't load like the whole fully fledged youtube iframe but it uh, loads like an like a different one optimized for loading times and for speed and so on then it's usually most of the times these iframes uh, that are uh, loaded are not lazy loaded so what we do a lot of the times is we say okay change the uh, markup of what uh, you get back and add either a, a loading lazy uh, attribute to the iframe this would be like a m modern approach or um, with an older approach, um, you could uh, also add like a data attribute, like make the source attribute, like change that to data source. And then with a plugin with like lazy sizes or with your custom script, just uh, replace or put the data source into the source whenever this iframe gets into the viewport or after the page has, uh, has been loaded. So yes. Long story short, if you care for page speed and for a good performance and for privacy and all of that, whenever you use OMBED, uh, which is super convenient, actually, I mean, uh, you cannot deny that it's like super nice to just paste the link and then you have the video or like a card from Twitter or whatever uh, directly on your website. But be sure to check the output of that. And then if it's not like what you think it should be or if there are better ways to do it then please adjust especially if it's like some privacy related things just make sure that this is handled well for your visitors okay let me put that in my own words to embed social media into a wordpress website you typically don't have to do anything it just works out of the box by copy and pasting a link into your editor but you should be aware of the server side implications in terms of for example, caching and loading times, you should be aware about the privacy and you should be aware about the performance implications that this might have. So if you're looking at a WordPress website at scale, be sure to watch OM bets and to optimize them where needed. Yes, great summary. Thanks. <laughs>